Hi and welcome to Using Grading Rubrics to Assess Student Work in Blackboard. Part 1, Creating a New Rubric in Blackboard. A grading rubric is used to define the criteria and standards by which a student's work will be evaluated. Determining these standards prior to assigning work to students creates advantages for you and your students. The student benefits because the rubric helps him better understand your expectations for the assignment and also how his work is being assessed. Rubrics benefit you by providing consistency in grading, reducing ambiguity, and generally reducing the time it takes to evaluate students' work. Blackboard includes a built-in rubric tool that allows you to incorporate interactive rubrics into assignments including discussion boards, blogs, and journals. This is a two-part video series and in this first video I will demonstrate how to create a new rubric then in the second video, I'll show you how to attach a rubric to an assignment in Blackboard and how to use that rubric to grade students' work. Let's begin by locating the rubric tool in our control panel in the Course Tools section. We can see here that we don't currently have any rubrics, but to create a new one, we click the Create Rubric button. And let's begin by providing a name for the rubric. As with any required information in Blackboard, the name is denoted by an orange asterisk. It means you've got to do it. But you also have the option to provide a description as well. Next, you'll determine the rubric type. Your rubric can be based on percentages, points, a point range, or a percentage range or you could elect to not use points at all. However, if you want it to be an interactive grading tool, you will need to select either points or percentages. I prefer the point range option, so that's what I'm going to use for this demonstration. But aside from how the points are specified, all the other steps in the process are identical. And now that we have determined the rubric type, let's move on to the criteria. By default, Blackboard includes three criteria, formatting, organization, and grammar. You can edit these existing criteria by clicking the Option button and selecting Edit. Also, if you need to get rid of a specific criterion, click the Option button and select Delete this row. To add additional criteria, click the Add Row button at the top of the screen. This is located just above the criteria area. Follow the editing procedure to rename any new rows that you create. New criteria will always appear at the bottom of the list, but you can reorder them as needed by clicking the Criteria button at the top of the column. This would be a good time to pause and consider the criteria for your grading rubric. If you've already got an established rubric, then you can plow ahead with copying and pasting into Blackboard pretty much as is. However, if you're new to rubrics, it's going to require a little bit of thought. One possibility is to use an existing rubric as a model for your own, and if you're new to this, then that's probably the best option for you. However, if you want to go completely from scratch, a complete discussion of the ins and outs of rubrics is beyond the scope of this video. However, here's a couple of key things to think about. First of all, what kind of assignment is it? There's some pretty obvious differences in the grading criteria for a discussion forum and a book report. For instance, a good discussion rubric will include criteria that consider the students' responses to other students participating in the discussion. On the other hand, the book report rubric will likely include criteria that address how the student summarizes the book's narrative. At a basic minimum, you should consider the completeness and organization of the content, the mechanics of the assignment, such as formatting appropriate to the assignment type, and in most cases, spelling and grammar are going to be a prime consideration. Actually, the three default criteria included in Blackboard cover these areas at the most basic level. However, even using these default criteria, you still must determine the level of acceptable performance, which takes us to our next step. Blackboard uses levels of achievement and the default categories are novice, competent, and proficient. As with the criteria, Blackboard allows you to rename 
or delete the levels in the same manner. Click the Levels Associated Edit button, select Edit to make changes, or delete this column to remove it completely. You can also add more levels to your rubric by clicking the Add Column button at the top of the rubric area. New columns will always be added on the right side of the rubric, but can be reordered using the Levels of Achievement button. This would probably be a good time to mention that you can that, that Blackboard expects the point value to increase from left to right, so your lowest scoring level will be the first column on the left, the highest scoring level will be the last column on the right. Once we create our levels of achievement, it's time to set percentage and point value or point values and add performance expectations for le each level across our categories. This is where you describe the levels of, e of each performance requirements. Here is an example from a simple discussion board rubric. The levels of achievement here are low quality, good quality, and high quality. And for the first criteria, which is grammar and mechanics, it includes these requirements. Zero points means that the student displays fundamental errors in vocabulary. One point, the student had some errors in grammar or spelling. Or two points means the student had no errors in grammar or spelling. And of course, uh, you continue this down for the whole rubric. But once you've entered all your performance level requirements for all the criteria, set all your point or percentage values, then the last step is easy. Just click the Submit button and your rubric will be added to your course in Blackboard. First, let me set my point totals. And you see that I've used the ranges, so I entered 0 through 1 for my novice level, 2 to 3 for competent, four to five for proficient and so on. And with point ranges that way it gives me a little leeway depending on how well or how poorly the student meets the level of achievement. Once I've entered all this information, I've only got one step left to do and that is to scroll to the bottom of the page and click the submit button and my rubric will be completed. Remember that you can always find your rubrics under Course Tools in the control panel for your course in Blackboard. In this lesson we learned how to create a rubric in Blackboard. In the next video I will demonstrate how you attach a rubric to an assignment in Blackboard and how you use it to grade student work. Thank you!